Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Today we're going to explore higher consciousness in business. With me is Dr. Gino Yu, who is a professor at Hong Kong Polytech University. He is a specialist in multimedia and design, but more than that, he is an international networker and a consciousness researcher. He sponsored the Toward a Science of Consciousness conference in Hong Kong in 2009, and next year, will be sponsoring that conference in Shanghai. Welcome, Gino. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. In your work uh, in multimedia and design and consciousness research, you are endeavoring to combine the latest developments in technology with the, uh, I think it's fair to say, the uh, ancient wisdom traditions regarding enlightenment and uh, the higher ranges of human potential. Yes, first of all, yes. First of all, I hosted the Science of Consciousness Conference. I uh, didn't sponsor it, oh. but uh, we hosted it. Okay. And we are uh -huh. working in the an area of uh, entertainment technology mm -hmm. and consciousness. And um, my background, actually, I have a PhD in electrical engineering from, from Berkeley. From my alma mater. Exactly. Yeah. And you're a legend there if you're into consciousness and exploring that. That's why I tried to meet up with you the last time I was here in Las Vegas because of your reputation and what, all that you've done you know, with this you know, towards promoting awareness of consciousness. Well, I, I love to promote it, but you're uh, leap years ahead of me, well, it would seem. we're looking at it and we're mm -hmm. really exploring it, but in this sense, we're both kind of on the same team of mm -hmm. just trying to raise awareness of yeah. it. But my background, uh, I know you studied consciousness. I kind of took a different route. Yeah. I have a bachelor's and PhD in electrical engineering and computer science. And in that, we look at the relation, and uh, in, in relation to consciousness, uh, we kind of look at the body as hardware and this conversation as software. So mm -hmm. physically, we're here, but in this conversation, we seem to be somewhere. And now, all of your viewers are also where we're at right now, too, mm -hmm. arguably. But we're interactive with it, mm -hmm. which is a second-person experience versus the third-person experience that these people are having. It's good to be mindful of that. Yeah, but mm -hmm. the question, though, is where are we right now? Mm -hmm. And so physically, we're here. Yeah. And so if I mention the Campanile at Berkeley, and you know what I mean, you know, are there certain neurons in my brain that are wired like yours? What's the relationship between this mental space and the physical body? Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, my PhD is actually in uh, BLSI CAD chip design. Mm. And uh, what happened for me was I worked at Bell Labs for a while and realized that real life as an engineer wasn't as satisfying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I got into media. Mm -hmm. And then I got into digital entertainment at the time, video games, animation, and all these things were very popular. And arguably, where you're at when you watch a movie, read a book, or play a video game, you're in the same space that we're in right now in this conversation. And so that led to, from a hardware-software perspective of my education, of looking at what is the relationship between this mental space and the physical body. Mm -hmm. Well, recently you and I had a conversation in which you pointed out that when two people are doing what we are right now, yeah establishing eye contact, yeah. looking at each other, yeah. that that creates all sorts of uh, physiological synchronizations between us. Yeah. So neurophysiologically, if we hooked ourselves up by EEG, and this mm -hmm. is some work recently by uh, an, a colleague of mine and a mentor named Peter Fennick in the UK, mm -hmm. is that if we're making eye contact, there are certain regions of the brain and certain frequency bands that then become synchronized. And if I wear foggy glasses or if I look away, that coupling becomes decoupled, which is really quite interesting. Now, are we talking about the same Peter Fenwick who is a uh, researcher in parapsychology? Yeah, well, near-death experience. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the fascinating thing with him, have you had him on your show? No, I haven't. Oh. I, w I would love to. Well, I was just, he was just in Tucson, mm -hmm. and I was just with him. And the interesting thing, which will interest you as well, too, and where we got coupled, is he actually was very interested in understanding enlightenment, mm -hmm. but in the 60s. Yeah. And at that time, 
you know, there was EEG and there were all of these ways of measuring, but his problem was he couldn't determine who was enlightened. You have a lot of these people saying that they're enlightened, yeah. but what does that mean? And then how do you develop an objective measure? Mm -hmm. And so it turned out he had one class of people that had data that had a similar experience that after the experience had a profound change in their life, and that's people that have gone through near-death experience. Absolutely. And there yeah. you've got clinical data on what's going on with them mm -hmm. physiologically, and they shouldn't be experiencing these things, yet they're experiencing them. Very profound spiritual awakenings. Well, and arguably, the, well, something happens, yeah. <laughs> and then they come back and mm -hmm. they realize that each moment is a miracle and they're very grateful. They often have a hard time integrating that experience. Yeah, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and we can talk a mm -hmm. lot about that as well, too. Well, I think for people in the world of business, if, if they enter into a state of higher consciousness and then they come back into a business environment, which can be very, very cutthroat, yeah. uh, it's, it's often like they don't know what to do. Well, there, there is that, and you started using, mm -hmm. and I know at the be beginning you, you mentioned higher consciousness, yeah. but even that is difficult to define, right? And so yeah. they have an experience, mm -hmm. um, and then that changes their worldview and how they process the experience of the moment. Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, related, especially related to business, it really isn't higher consciousness, you know, what does that mean? Consciousness is just the awareness of this. Yep. You know, arguably, higher consciousness would be more aware of this, but... Well, you, you seem to be taking kind of a Zen perspective here. Well, and so rather than that, it's mm -hmm. more, you know, a thing that's more palpable and mm -hmm. more understandable, especially when we don't know what yeah. consciousness is, yeah. is presence, mm -hmm. is the ability to maintain here presence. Now. Well, just presence, which is an energized physiology, arguably. Okay. Or, you know, it could be still, but there is something that you can see in someone's eyes. And, you know, if I look at you right now, and if I look at you like this, mm -hmm. this is going to feel a certain way right yeah. now, right? Yeah. And so this feels arguably a little more intense, right. and so arguably this we'd call like higher energy versus mm -hmm. if I shift my breathing a little, if I just go, oh man, you know, we were up all night at this festival. And you <laughs> were. And so arguably to be aware of things, you need a little more <laughs> energy than that, you know, if you've had a late night out, you yeah. know, drinking and all this other yeah. stuff, and that's just energy in the body, mm -hmm. right? And right. so to be hyper aware of everything that's going around and to know what, what's happening, you actually need more energy to be aware. Mm -hmm. And so if anyone you know, around, if I ask you to just be hyper aware of everything that's yeah. going on and then just try to maintain that. On the other hand, uh, you know, going into a kind of a nap like state, a slumber state, can also trigger creativity. Mm -hmm. Thomas Edison used to take frequent naps in his laboratory and uh, hold he, a ball, yeah. right? And when it dropped, he'd mm -hmm. write down what uh, he was remembering. He, he, information can bubble up from the subconscious yeah, that way. Yeah. But arguably, when you're dealing with in the business environment, yeah. when you're dealing with investors yes. <laughs> and customers, <laughs> and you're designing your product, yeah. <laughs> You, it would be better to be arguably more present. Right. Not everybody is a Thomas Edison. Well, even Thomas Edison, he got the inspiration from that. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, in business, yeah. it's not just about the inspiration and the idea. To with investors. It's the execution and everything That's there. Right. Yeah. And then there, it's really mm -hmm. and to do that, you have to. And in today's global environment, where people are crossing many, many time zones, the, that ability to be present is crucial. Yeah. And, and the reason why is that most people are driven and the energy for their is driven by the stories. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to do it unless you pay me. Yeah. Well, you know, all of these symbols that are out here that drive them versus being aware where the energy really comes from mm -hmm. is how you're breathing, how you're holding your physiology, mm -hmm. right? And, and so the stories provide the context for physiological state. Mm -hmm. And so why do people drive fast cars? Why do they jump out of airplanes and everything? Is because the physiology naturally wants to move towards an high, a higher energy state. Just like a, a flower grows towards the sun, you know, the physiology wants to move to higher energy states, but the only mechanism that it knows is to project things into story and then have these stories drive people. 
Now what we found, which is really quite interesting, is that the success of an entrepreneur or a company correlates to the level of consciousness or the ability to maintain presence of the entrepreneur or the management team of the company. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the more present I can be with my interviewer yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> the, 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 your investor, yeah. your customer, mm -hmm. your employees, and the product, the more in flow things are going to be. And that also means, I guess, processing information as it comes to you and responding in exactly, real time. which is just like it. So it's living from flow or mm -hmm. presence that yeah. you get, which is like a soccer, you know, someone on mm -hmm. the World Cup. You know, I'd say the Super Bowl, but I've been in yeah. Asia for a while, the World Cup, mm -hmm. or a stock trader or anything, or a rock climber mm -hmm. or a surfer or any of these things. And these activities kick people into this state. But if you realize that it's really about the somatic experience, and then if you can maintain that state mm -hmm. independent of context, then your whole relationship with reality mm -hmm. changes. Because you'll notice, just, just as you can be aware of what's going on around us, the air conditioning and all, all the subtle changes here, as you're talking to me, you can actually feel your breathing. Mm -hmm. If I ask you right now to scan your body, you can feel that as well yeah. too. And so if you have this information, this information of what's saying and what's around you, and you integrate all of that in your activity, that's action from flow. Well, different people have different rhythms. Yeah. And also different situations require different rhythms as, as well. It, it's often necessary to pace the people you're with, and some of them are very high speed, and some of them are very slow and thoughtful. Yeah, and that's just empathy. Mm -hmm. Right, and so can you regulate this? So if I were to, you know, sit with you like this, yeah. and so we can be here, the very happy space. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very glad to be with you. Yeah, and I'm mm -hmm. glad to be with you too. And there's a lot of exciting opportunities and collaborations. Indeed. You know, here, you in the in the West, and mm -hmm. you know me in the East, and all. Of, the network of people mm -hmm. that you know and the work that you do is really inspiring not only to me but to others. Well, it, that's very heartwarming. Yeah, for me indeed it is. That's yeah. why I do it. I know. <laughs> and so here if you look at this yeah. what we're talking about here mm -hmm. is in the ability to mirror yeah. and to empathize right. and to use language mm -hmm. to make people feel good and comfortable. Yeah. And if you're in business and you're able to do this, it's a great skill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the thing about this is it turns out that thought in your experience of the moment through the senses use the same underlying hardware. It uses the same autonomic nervous system, mm -hmm. dopamine, serotonin, all of these things are released from thought. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about it, we uh, this is the Dan Siegel. <laughs> have you interviewed Dan Siegel? No, I have oh, he's not. a great. Yeah. So the model of the brain. There's the okay. stem. The two there's the limbic system, yeah. and then the cortex. Uh -huh. And as we develop the cortex, it uses the same limbic system and the stem. Right. But the issue is that your awareness doesn't know the difference. And so if you said to me something like, "Darn you, Gino, you suck! I can't believe yeah. you're saying this." Uh -huh. And then if I said, "I'm sorry, Jeffrey." Yeah. I didn't mean to, and I apologize. Mm -hmm. right. Where is conflict? If I know the influence from what's happening from my physiology mm -hmm. versus what's coming from thought, yep. and if I can decouple this mm -hmm. and stay here mm -hmm. so that my autonomic nervous system is only here to keep me physically safe, mm -hmm. what could you possibly say to me to create an argument? Good, good point. And so the mm -hmm. only time an argument happens is when there's an emotional attachment on one side mm -hmm. bumping up against an emotional attachment on the other side, right? And if I'm able to let go of all emotional attachment on this side because I can stay mm -hmm. here, what is there to create an argument? So just as it takes two people to have a conversation, it takes two people to have an argument. You seem to be uh, bringing up the concept of mindfulness here. Well, mindfulness is a term that's has a lot of meanings to a it, lot of it, different it people. It does, and I'm thinking of it in the Buddhist context of Vipassana meditation, which uh -huh. is particularly focused on separating oneself from uh, cravings and fears and well, emotions. Well, no, it's just yeah. cultivating greater somatic awareness. Uh -huh. So what is the relationship between the thoughts and where things are coming from mm -hmm. and how your 
your physiology is behaving. Mm -hmm. And so the interesting thing, as I brought up before, is just as you can be aware of what's happening around you, you can actually be aware of how you're breathing. Yep. And if I ask you to start breathing, you're kind of a little bit of a shallow breather, but if I ask you to breathe deeply from mm -hmm. your belly, yep. and tr no, 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 yeah, that's a chest. Yep. That's so my the chest. chest yeah. So just keep the chest flat, All right. and then just breathe through your belly. I you know girls don't like this, but where the belly just And so here you're using your diaphragm. Mm -hmm. And so the diaphragm is one of the, when you get stressed, that's one of the first things to lock up as well too. Yeah. And the main advantage of it is that if you try to breathe deeply from your belly and try to feel angry at the same time, it's very difficult. Oh. And so mind and body mm -hmm. come together in emotion. So anger, you know, if you look at the way yeah. that you're breathing when you're angry, well, the solar plexus so region is generally associated with fear and anger. Yeah, and that's because the, the, the diaphragm is locked up, and all of these changes happen when your autonomic nervous system is activated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And the issue is that it was developed from an evolutionary psychology perspective to keep us physically safe. Sure. But then these systems are used in thought, mm -hmm. and the issue is your awareness doesn't know the difference. So what you're saying is that by being aware somatically of what's going on, we are able to sort of get out from under the influence of the, this, all those somatic processes. We, it gives us a chance to step back a little. Better than that. Yeah. You know, and so p most people are, would band-aid and, oh, I'm not breathing right, I should do this, etc. Mm -hmm. Better is to look at what are the triggers, mm -hmm. you know, what are the initial stimuli yeah. that trigger that. Mm -hmm. And so normally if we're like this and you're happy and joyful, what is it that takes you out of that? Mm -hmm. And generally it's going to be something out here well, or I, the framing of something. I know a lot of body therapists talk about blockages. That yeah. you, your energy tends to get blocked here or blocked here or blocked here yeah. and that uh, through various somatic processes you can learn to let that energy flow so yeah. it doesn't get stuck or blocked. And well, you know, that's, you know, in the Eastern practice yeah. there's Qigong and these right. kind of things. In the Western, I guess the main guy behind that would be Wilhelm Reich. Wilhelm Reich. Yeah. Or, student of yeah. Freud's who noticed that mm -hmm. muscle armoring and as you have trauma, you know, mm -hmm. as you develop usually yeah. in the first six months, especially there are five character types that come from, from that. Yeah. And the psychology and the physiology develop together. Mm -hmm. And so clearly if I'm always fearful, the, the hormones and all of these things that are, that are in the physiology that, that, right. that I'm creating endogenously mm -hmm. will influence the development of my physiology. Mm -hmm. So a person's body shape and how they move through the world mm -hmm. will be influenced by that. And then the psychology and the physiology bind mm -hmm. into these kind of processes. Now, if I were a business executive, yeah. I can well imagine I might have a coach who could help me with all of these mm -hmm. things. But your best coach mm -hmm. is your inner coach, mm -hmm. right? And so coaches are crutches and, and those are helpful, but yeah. ultimately, it's not, it's for each person in each company, it's this and this. Mm -hmm. And so I run a workshop, uh, HEC, I've done it in, in San Francisco and in Hong Kong, and it's called Entrepreneurship, Innovation, and Self-Discovery. Mm. And so there, it's the tagline for it is entrepreneurship as a spiritual path. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's a passion or a desire, which is an emotion, working through a conditioned worldview, which is a person's belief system, with or against the unknown, mm -hmm. which is space and time, All around this is, you know, yeah. what, what are the forces driving you? What are the emotion, what are the stories creating the, the emotions that are driving you? Mm -hmm. And what are the beliefs that are motivating the action? And as the actions happen, mm -hmm. how does the reality respond? And as the reality responds, how does that make us feel? And it's understanding that loop. Mm -hmm. And usually what happens is you get caught by past trauma yep. showing up mm -hmm. in a Jungian way. It's your shadow self or whatever, projecting into the material world. Right. And as you're dealing with this, it's influencing this mm -hmm. towards states that wounds mm -hmm. <laughs> that trigger, yeah. that 
trigger fear and anxiety and all yeah. these other things. Well, now you're talking about a, a lifelong growth process. Well, it's for the interesting thing yeah. is for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. it's different. Okay. And so there are, you probably are familiar with the right-hand path and the left-hand path. I, I am, but let's review it for our viewers. So the right-hand path is society has a certain structure. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a professor at a university, and for me to get tenure and to become a full professor and everything. Mm -hmm. There's a certain system and yeah. there's you know the structure. Steps to take. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And there are systems there to support you and to yeah. nurture you and support you. Right. And then the left hand path are the people that basically said, to hell with all of this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go on my own. Right? And yeah. so there it's the Prometheus story of going from the known to the unknown mm -hmm. and then back to the known. Mm -hmm. And it's discovering the fire and bringing it back. Stealing the fire from the gods, yeah. if I Which recall. is, well, <laughs> the, the god, the, the god <laughs> has to allow you to yeah. <laughs> somehow, but there's a road to trials. And yeah. so there you probably are familiar mm -hmm. with the monomyth, mm -hmm. the call to action, mm -hmm. the refusal of the call, right. you know, mm -hmm. the uh, Supernatural powers, the, the threshold guardian, the road to trials, apotheosis, return, return threshold, and back. The, now you're talking about some of the the great myths, uh, Joseph Campbell's exactly uh, hero's the, journey, exactly for example, or yeah. the process of alchemical transformation. Yeah. yeah, and then my work is rather than looking at that, it's actually physiological projections. Mm -hmm. You know, and so arguably, if we talk about symbolic consciousness, when you're born there are no symbols, right? Right. But then as you engage the world, similar to this Wilhelm Reich process that mm -hmm. we were talking about, then I have experiences and these experiences, I experience them through the physiology, right. and then there's a binding between the story and the symbol mm -hmm. and the physiological processes. Yes. And so physiology tries to maintain homeostasis, which reinforces a worldview, which motivates action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so there's this, this process that keeps a person's behavior going. Well, let's talk briefly about how all of this impacts your work in multimedia. Well, and so <laughs> that could be another topic, yeah. but generally what we're looking at is how do we use media, interactive media and biofeedback mm -hmm. to facilitate personal transformation and induce awakening, mm -hmm. which would be <laughs> another hard thing to describe. But generally if you look at it and if we look at the developmental process path, you know, we talked about Wilhelm Reich a little bit. Yes. But there's another guy named Jean Piaget mm -hmm. who studied uh, childhood development. Exactly. Yes. And so your worldview continues to develop mm -hmm. and he mapped out the stages that yes, you develop. Mm -hmm. And then there are other people that kind of continued beyond. Abraham so Maslow. Maslow and the hierarchy of needs or yes. Claire Graves and the levels of existence. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with Claire no, Graves? Actually not so much. Really? No. Oh. So it turns out the decisions that you make, or as you live your life, the decisions that you make change. Mm -hmm. You know, so for example, we had just talked ab uh, about one of your staff members who had one life and he was mentioning this being another life. Mm -hmm. he, he had worked in Asia and everything yes, right. and realized that, hey, enough is enough or something shifted in him and he wanted to do something else. Mm -hmm. And so as we live our life, our worldview continues to change. Yes, it does. And so what Claire Graves did was mm -hmm. he mapped out in rough form mm -hmm. these levels of existence mm -hmm. of the stages in which people change. And to put it in an analogy with, it happens with individuals mm -hmm. and it kind of happens with countries as well too. So if you look at China today, yes. China is kind of where the US was in the late 1800s. If you oh, think of the pollution, right. yeah. child labor. Only it's, it's changing so fast. Yes, and that's where technology comes yeah. in, and we can talk about that in a second. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia is actually kind of where the U.S. was in the 1700s. Mm -hmm. If you think of the Puritans and the witch trials, the Salem yes. witch trials, and mm -hmm. all of that very mm -hmm. fundamentalist view, yeah. these are all different stages in the Claire Grave scale. Uh -huh. And as people develop, mm -hmm. as individuals develop, mm -hmm. and collectives of individuals, yeah individuals develop. You know, now you have an African-American president, mm -hmm. you have gay marriage, there are all of these things that are just even 
you know, places like Saudi Arabia, these probably yeah. are still... Sometimes we wonder, what's the matter? Why can't the rest of the world pace us exactly? Yeah, and then, mm -hmm. then that's the issue, is that each person, <laughs> uh -huh. and the, the key thing about that which you bring up, is that we're all in essentially the same, mm -hmm. but we're just at different stages of development. Well, I'm under the impression, though, that these stages, um, the order in which one goes through these stages can can be different from person to person or country to country. I, I understand that Maslow, for example, at the end of his life decided that the hierarchy uh, should be reversed, that people should start with self-actualization and then move. Well, my work the actually, others. my work, mm -hmm. in fact, I have a paper published in this as well uh -huh. too, called On uh, Recovering Creativity. Mm -hmm. The argument is that we were born mm -hmm. enlightened effectively. Yeah. And then what happens is through the, we, but we're dependent, mm -hmm. and through the development of becoming independent, we take on all of this conditioning. Mm -hmm. And to be to to climb the hierarchy of needs is, yeah. isn't going out here, it's really undoing all of the, yeah, the issues here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, ultimately it's about being in mm -hmm. the state where you're acting from mm -hmm. intuition or insight mm -hmm. or natural intelligence, mm -hmm. as they would say. But then that can get a little woo-woo. Well, I think T.S. Eliot in uh, one of his poems talked about arriving home where you've always been, only discovering it for the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Gino Hugh, our time is up. Okay. It's been a great pleasure having this half hour with you. Thank yeah. you so much for being with me. Thank you. And thank you for being with us.